Hello everyone, welcome to Infigyan. In this very exciting video of trigonometric slash exponential equations. In this video, we will be solving sin x equal to 2. While solving this problem, we will see trigonometric function, complex number, Euler's identity, and we will conclude our result. So let's get started and I will begin with the graph of sin function. If you will see the left hand side, this function lies between, let me write here, sin x always lies in between minus 1 and 1. Now check the graph also. Now second point, right hand side is constant function which is y equal to 2 line. Okay, this line is y equal to. Now you can see this is plus 1. The lower value of sine function is negative 1. Line is at y equal to 2. There would be no any intersection. So no real solution we will have. First point is no real solution because no intersection. That means we do, we do not have any real solution. So what is possibility? That is complex solution. So in this video we will find out complex solution which is possible for this equation sin x equal to 2. So let me begin this by writing Euler's identity. As we know, e raised to the power i x is cos x plus i sin x. Similarly, e raised to the power minus i x is cos x minus i sin x. Okay, now add above equation. Then we will get cos. If I will subtract above, above equation, then I will get sin. So let's subtract. I will write e power i x minus e power minus i x equal to 2 i sin x. Once we subtract cos x will cancel out. So what is left? 2 i sin x. Divide both sides by 2 i. Okay. So 2 i 2 i will get over. What we will get after that? Sin x is equal to e power i x minus e power minus i x over 2 i. Now I will write sin x equal to 2. So that means this value is equal to 2. Multiply both sides by 2 i. e power i x minus e power minus i x equal to 4 i. Now I will give one substitution here, which is e power i x equal to t. Once e power i x equal to t, e power minus i x would be 1 over t by the exponent property. e power minus i x can be written as 1 over e power i x, so 1 over t. I will write this equation as t minus 1 over t equal to 4i and I will call this is my equation number 1. Now squaring both sides. Once I will square both sides, I will write whole square. I will write right hand side also whole square. So this will give us a square plus b square minus 2ab so 2t into 1 by t so minus 2 equal to 16i square as we all know i is equal to square root of negative 1 that means i square is equal to negative 1 so this will become negative 16 okay so ultimately if i will add plus 2 to both sides so i will get t square plus 1 over t square equal to negative 14. This is also very very useful equation.
equation number one t minus one over t equal to four i, and this is equation number two t square plus one over t square is equal to negative forty. Now let's take t plus one over t whole square. Apply that algebraic identity, so it will become t square plus one over t square plus two times t into one by t, so two. Okay. Let's put the value of t square plus one by t square, which is negative fourteen plus two, which is negative twelve. I can write negative twelve as twelve i square. Now you can see. Your left hand side is t plus one by t whole square, and your right hand side is twelve i square. Take a square root both sides. Once I will take a square root, then our equation will convert t plus one over t equal to plus minus because we are taking a square root, so plus minus i times twelve is four times three, so it will give us two root three. I. This is our equation number three and the most important equation. Now, from equation one and equation three, we will collect the value of t. Let me write both equations. If I will add both the equations, then I will get t directly. Let me write there t minus one over t equal to four i. Equal to four i and t plus one over t equal to plus minus two root three i. So these are two equations. Now we have to solve these equations for the value of t. Let add both equations. Once I will add, I will get left hand side would be two t. And right hand side would be 4i plus minus. So let me take i common out. So 4 plus minus 2 root 3. Okay. Divide this equation by 2. It is divisible. So t will be equal to i in bracket. I will get plus minus root 3. 2 will be cancelled out. And what was our consideration? T e raised to the power i x. So let me replace t by e power i x. So I will write e power i x equal to i times two plus minus root three. Take ln both sides now. Once I will take ln both sides. ln a par b b ln a this is what we know the property logarithmic property so i will get here i x equal to ln i times 2 plus minus root 3 so now one more property i will use ln ab equal to ln a plus ln b here consider i is a this bracket is b I will write ln i plus ln two plus minus root three. Okay, divide both sides by x by i. So we will collect x. So it will become ln i plus ln two plus minus root three over i. This is our result. Let me put this into the box, and then we can find out two complex roots. Once you will put i equal to e raised to the power i pi by two. Okay, i equal to cos pi by two plus i sine pi by two. So we can write any time e raised to the power i pi by two. That means ln i i can write. Ln take ln both sides, so it will give give us i pi over two. So in place of ln i, we can put i pi over two. In place of ln two plus minus root three, you will use calculator, 
and i is there in the denominator so this will give us one complex value x equal to 1.57 plus 1.31 i and minus sign is also there so once you will consider plus sign here then you will get minus let me write that value also 1.57 minus 1.31 i okay for plus sign this value will come out for minus sign here you will get plus here means the the reverse order is reverse but important is your complex conjugate form must you will get so this is possible solution for sin x equal to 2 likewise we can find out many number of complex solution also so here we have one set of solution i hope you like this video thank you so much for watching do not forget to like share and subscribe bye bye till next video